sorry. I was just really excited that the video sequence editor turns the waveform red now when it's clipping. Recently I've been working on a little short film that my friends and I made back around Christmas time. And a problem that has come up actually has been that the background sound and just the sound in general really wasn't that amazing on the day of the shoot. And that actually will happen a lot in production environments. So I've been going through and recreating the sound effects through each shot. And it's actually a really enjoyable process once you get a mix that's good sounding. So I'd like to show you how to do that in Blender 2.8 and a few of the nice new features that are in there to help you along. So I'm just going to play back the original audio real quick here so you can hear just how terrible it was. I think he's in it. What? All right, I'm ready. All right. So it's not terrible, but you can hear the people talking in the background and the camera is trying to focus at the same time, which the microphone picked up. Before I go into dropping in the sounds and mixing them and showing you how to place them and stuff like that, I'd like to show you just how I got these sounds here. It is a pretty simple process. are swarming me to death. So, I'm not super professional at recording, as you can see, but what I got, which wasn't actually in the video, I did it a little bit differently, but that's basically how I did it. Anyways, what I got was pretty much all I needed, so I'm gonna grab some of those files and walk you through the process here. Here I've imported a number of tracks that I recorded, and first what I'd like to do is sort of split them up into little chunks that I'll be able to use nicely. So if you click draw waveform over here, you can see all the little impacts that I've got here. This is hitting sticks, so I'm gonna use this for when he runs through these bushes here and sort of lands real hard. You can see he's in a thicket there. So I'm just gonna grab those and move them out of the way. And then I'm going to split this track up into little parts that I can use. And not all of these are going to be perfect, but a lot of the time you really don't need perfect. You just sort of need to sell the idea that he's actually landing on something in there. And also I've heard that it's a good idea to sort of go over the top a little bit on your sound effects work just because sometimes there's music going on and sometimes there's dialogue going on so you can always turn it down if you need to but it's good to have it a little bit over the top so what i'm doing here is actually mostly going by sight i can see when the sound effect starts and basically when it ends that's not a good one <laughs> All right, so I've got these all split up. I'm just going to grab them and move them over here where I can use them later. And I'm gonna go into some of these other ones to use. It's also a good idea to check mono. And I think if Blender is smart, yeah, Blender is actually really great. It made all these other pieces of that track mono when I selected one part. So the idea is if it's mono, then you can pan it to either side if you need to, which it can be really useful if you have somebody like, in this case, he's running past the screen, so I can start panning it off to the left once he gets past. If we hide the video, I actually should have done that a while ago, but that way your computer doesn't have to load the RAM for the video, which can be handy if you're just focusing on the audio for now. And you don't have to go too crazy on these like I'm doing. Um, Around six or seven steps should be fine. But I figure I might as well just keep cutting these up while I have them. All right, there's a, a bunch more, but I'm just gonna delete those for now because we don't need all that. All right, now we've got our three categories. There's some um, light sticks heavier sticks, and then the long grass steps. So I'm going to unhide my video now. 
and I'm just going to crop it to the section that I need. As you can see, this is where I started saying action. You can go ahead, start running, and that's probably a good place to start. So I'm going to start my footage at that part. And when he runs past, that's a good place to end it. Maybe a little bit more just so you can hear the footsteps fading away. There. And if you want, you can just cut off the ends with K. Alright, so now I have this all sliced down to what I need, and I can start dropping in sounds that sound good. So I think when he starts going, he's running in the grass, and then he goes through this little thicket of bushes here. So I'm going to start with the grass steps. Just drop them in. And if you want these strips to be less fat, you can grab this little nub here at the top of that and just scale it up a little bit. That way you can see more what you're doing. Alright, so let's just zoom in here and get started. A good way to tell when he's when there's a footfall is by looking at the shoulders. You can see when they hit the ground. That's usually when your foot is hitting the ground too. So he's running pretty fast, so these are gonna be fairly quick hits. One, two. And he just brushes up against the branch there. And I'm going to take some of my stick hits here for right when he lands and just pop them in there. Once again, if you want to go a little bit over the top here, that is fine. But also, you can see he's hitting these, brushing up against these. So I'm going to place this here for when he's got that friction going on. And it's really not an exact science, but just sort of matching up what you're seeing with what you're hearing. And he's got another few heavy footsteps in there after he lands, so I'm going to put some more crunchy stuff in. If you hold down Alt and then scroll, that can be a good way to add the video clips into your RAM. As you can see, this thick red line here is the video that you have in your RAM. So once you get that all loaded up, you can actually play the video back a lot faster without lag. And there's this nice little bush hit here that's just, it looks really sweet. So I'm going to accent that with some sound here. Let's see, what do we got? Um, something a little less brutal. Some of these stick hits. 
would work great. And if you just layer some of these up. Oh, this is a really nice one for that part. And then you can see these very specific footsteps coming up here that I am very specifically going to add in footsteps for. <laughs> Boom, one there, one there, one there, one there, one there. Whoops. Boom. One there. Just grab these and bring them over. One there. Once again, when you can't see the feet hitting the ground, just look at the shoulders, and those will indicate when he hits the ground. And one there. One there. So, this should be good. Let's just check how it goes. Yeah, that's pretty good. Sounds all right. They're all the same volume right now, and they're all panned the same. So now I'm going to show you the really cool new feature, which is, if you see the little volume thing here, when you turn it up, you can actually see the clip get bigger, and it turns red when it's clipping. So when he's way back there, I'm going to do this sound as if it's from the camera's perspective. So I'm going to turn it quite a bit farther down. I'm going to say like maybe a point two when he's out there. And as he gets closer to the camera, he slowly gets louder. This is some pretty serious sounds, but I'd say closer to a point four. And then when he hits the ground, you're gonna definitely hear that a lot louder. I'm gonna scooch this over a little bit. Then these two footsteps here. Yeah, nice. Still, it's got to be a little bit quieter. I'd say closer to a 0.6. And then these footsteps will be a little bit quieter in comparison. Uh, um, maybe closer to a 0.5. And then all this... I don't know, that seems alright. I really like this long drawn out one, that's good. But some of the other ones I'm going to tone down a bit. And there's not a whole lot of rhyme or reason to it, but... Yeah. <laughs> Just do what sounds and looks good. That's gotten pretty good. And then these footsteps, I'm going to keep a little bit quieter, close to a, mm, maybe a 0.5 when he starts. And then when he gets closer to the camera, bring it up to 1, and maybe even a little bit louder than 1. So you can even go like 0.55 for when he gets halfway. Throw this up 0.6. And then he's getting really close here, so I'm going to get a bit higher in numbers. So that's a 0.7. Here, I would say, actually, I'm going to morph this more of a 0.8. And then once he gets, like, right in front of the camera, I'd say full blast. 
and then even when he gets closer, I would say 1.2 maybe. And finally, a 1.3 for running he's right next to the microphone. Or maybe 0.4. Try that. Let's see how this goes. Yeah, nice. And if you're if you want things to sound a little bit more dynamic, you can actually start some panning. So I think panning to the left is a negative value. So pan is set to zero by default. So if we go negative two, let's see how that sounds. Yeah, that's definitely farther on the left. And that is right next to you when that happens. So I'd even go like negative 0.5 and set this to maybe 0.2 and then point 0.1, and we'll just get a little bit of panning to the side on the footsteps. Nice. So I think that's about it. Let's try that. This is a little bit too drawn out, I think. So I'm going to animate those values. You can animate a value by holding your mouse over the volume and then pressing I, and then I again. Actually, I'm going to change this to closer to a 0.5, and then I over that value. And actually, if you look at a timeline, whoa, don't want to quite do that. If you look at a timeline, then you can see the keyframes on the timeline. And actually, a really cool feature, which is hard to see at the moment, but if we make this a little bigger, you can actually see... Okay, here's the one I was affecting. When it's here, let's just make it a bit bigger so you can really see the difference. It's really big, and then it starts to fade out when it gets closer to 0.5. So it will actually display the volume changing, which is a new feature in 2.8, and it's really nice. So I'm going to drop that back to what it was. And that way it just fades out a little bit more. It doesn't stretch on for as long. I'm going to edit that just a little bit. All right, I'd say that is pretty much good. Sorry if I rambled a bit here. It's more of an artistic process than an exact science, although there are some principles. I really hope you learned something from that and enjoyed it. I'll see you next time. Cheers. I realize I literally just said goodbye, but if you want to get this pack of hydraulics for Blender, there's a link in the description. Just enter your email and I'll send them right over.